We get together, yeah, we get together. Separate's always better when there's feelings in both. Let me some sugar. I am your neighbor. First off, I just want to apologize for the noise from the pipes. Um, finally, fi finally got some rugs and stuff to try and like kill the rest of the echo in this room, and then they decide that uh, our radiator is just going to stop functioning correctly. Uh, so that's been happening for a little over a day now. So today, uh, I want to talk about art, our attitude towards it, how we define it, and most importantly, how we treat it in comparison to entertainment. This is always like a weird topic to talk about because art has so many different definitions that, that a lot of the time, uh, discussions about this end up just being arguments over what art even is. Art as a concept always evokes this sort of sense of subjectivity. The way that you evaluate whether something is art or not is 99% of the time qualitative and, and not quantitative. You can't, you can't really count uh, how artistic something is. Then you take into account all the different kinds of art there is. You've got things like sculpture and painting, you know, visual arts, which has a very different definition than uh, the concept of art through mediums such as film and, and music. The artistic aspect of it is something that's less tangible. It also gets rough because technically there's also an art to everything. Uh, even if you think a singer isn't really an artist, they, they just sing uh, pop songs other people write, that whole thing. Uh, there is an art to singing well. Uh, there is an art towards cooking. There is an art to uh, being considered a wealthy businessman, uh, mostly through lies and gloating. So I just want to establish like right off the bat that the parameters for art that I'm using in this video uh, is basically a, a, a work that communicates or expresses something about the human condition. Uh, something that is meant not uh, just to entertain, but to uh, provoke thought. And I'm mostly going to be focusing on the contrast with entertainment, so I'm going to be using uh, primarily the mediums of film, music, and literature. Art and entertainment usually go hand in hand in these mediums, uh, but we treat them very differently, and, and there's been some trends in conversation uh, recently that I think is kind of harmful to the development of both art and entertainment. Now, like I said earlier, there there is a lot of gray area uh, when it comes to uh, the line between art and entertainment. I feel like if you've got a Venn diagram of art and entertainment, uh, you've almost got one circle, just tiny slivers of art and entertainment uh, on the very end and, and a vast mixture in the middle. So if I call somebody an artist, that doesn't mean that they don't entertain, they just, I primarily consider them to be an artist. And if I call somebody an entertainer, that doesn't mean that they aren't also uh, creating art, it just means that I primarily consider them an entertainer. I don't think it's much of a stretch to say that Katy Perry, for example, is primarily an entertainer. It doesn't mean that she's not an artist, but when I look at her music, it is a body of pop music that is meant to be played in a club. Uh, it all has Eurobeats behind it, even sad songs like the one that got away. Uh, and I just feel like it's not really meant to give you uh, much pause for reflection. And it feels like it's mostly made as a commercial product, not something to uh, try and improve the world, really. And there's nothing wrong with that. There was an interview she was doing with a radio station about a new album she had coming out. I don't know which one it was, I don't, I don't really know her specific albums. She was talking about how hard these songs were to record for her, and how emotional it was, and how much of herself went into it. And then they played some of her music, and I just... I didn't see it. It's a really bizarre thing where there's a lot of very uh, leading questions to talk about how much depth there was behind this music, and it just felt like they were trying really hard to sell her something that she wasn't. And that reminded me of this whole Rebecca Black fiasco years ago. Y'all know about when Friday dropped and everybody freaked out. Uh, well, there was an interview with Miley Cyrus where she uh, actually went off and got upset uh, about Rebecca Black. She went on record saying, uh, it should be harder to be an artist. You shouldn't be able to just put a song on YouTube and then go out on tour. And I mean, like, first off, I could point out that Miley didn't really have to claw her way to the top and work really hard to get famous. Uh, so, so I guess I just did. But mainly, I just found it odd how exclusionary she was in this rant. These people shouldn't be allowed to be called artists. When, keep in mind, uh, first off, Rebecca Black wasn't exactly revered. Uh, she was infamous. She, she was known for having a really bad song. She was confusing that infamy with being considered an artist. And at the time, keep in mind, she was also just kind of doing empty pop music. She was still mostly a Disney Channel girl around that time. It seems like there's this conception of art as this, as this noble cause uh, that is far more valuable than entertainment. And so you've got entertainers who are perfectly fine entertainers, whether it's through their PR teams or through a belief of their own, are wildly trying to cling to the idea that they are artists and that they are somehow separate and above entertainers. These entertainers are all really furious uh, to make sure that there, there's good PR out there about them being an artist and having really deep meaning. 
even for music that really isn't. One of the only exceptions I can think of is Kesha. I, I don't like her music, but I, I've got a lot of respect for her for just kind of being honest about like, yeah, this is just fun pop music. That's what it is, and, and that's perfectly fine. And like this attitude isn't just harmful to, you know, to artists, to people who are uh, primarily trying to make art and trying to uh, share like personal deep messages. It's also harmful to the entertainers. Maybe it's just me, but I, I can't imagine it's a great feeling to be building up your career and your fan base off of this uh, PR approved image that you're putting out there instead of just being honest with what you want and what you're creating. I feel like it becomes easier to express yourself when you're less concerned about how people are perceiving you and more concerned with actually taking who you are and putting it out there. That's what we all say like art is, right? It's self-expression. It's, it's taking yourself and putting yourself out there for other people. So I feel like we've got to stop looking down on entertainment as like the less valuable uh, stupid kid brother of art. They both serve different purposes and do different things, but they're both important things and they often go like hand in hand. The Harry Potter series, for example, so many people have stories about how those books touched them as kids. Um, phrasing? That series had a lot of artistic merit to a lot of people, but that message and that artistic value wouldn't have spread so easily if J.K. Rowling wasn't also really good at entertaining people with her books. Because let's be honest, as kids, the whole deep thinking artistic aspect of it isn't really our strong suit. But because the Harry Potter books were so entertaining, they managed to keep us enthralled. And then between all the jokes and the cool magic and just the, the fantasy of it all, she spoke about the human condition in terms that a child could understand, but also still adults would relate to. Harry Potter succeeds on both an artistic and an entertainment level. That's what makes it so good. Then look at some of our greatest comedians. You think of comedy and you think of comedy as just pure entertainment. You know, a lot of people, when you look at like uh, uh, comedy movies or TV shows compared to dramatic movies or TV shows, people are like, the comedies are the entertainment, the dramas are the art. But stand-up comedians, I think, are, are just some of the best proof that comedy is art. If you've never seen it, just look up Whoopi Goldberg's one-woman show. I think it was just called Whoopi. That is the perfect example of an entertainer using laughter to help deliver some really powerful artistic statements. When you look at almost every successful or long-lasting film or book or musician, you'll find that there are blends of art and entertainment in each. It's a wide spectrum and it's wonderful because that's what makes it worth creating new things. If there was just art or there was just entertainment, we would run out of things to make really, really fast. And I also really want to establish that, I, that I'm not like offended that art isn't being respected or anything uh, by entertainers claiming to be artists or whatever. Like this isn't like a how dare they call themselves that. That's the attitude I want to talk against. These last couple years, we've been in a real kick of like, yeah, go artists, praise the artists. If artists were actually the underdog, we wouldn't be celebrating them nonstop. I feel like we need to step back, sort of practice some restraint and realize that we've kind of glorified art to the point where we're not only misunderstanding what it is, uh, but also forgetting how important entertainment is. Entertainment is what the stupid kids watch, but, but we're all fleshed out, uh, special important adults, and so what we engage in is art. And art is important. You know, I, I will always uh, say that. I fight for games to be considered art all the time. I think that art is one of the most valuable things we have but that's not really the minority opinion anymore. Something that my generation has brought with it is this huge respect for art, which is great, but I feel like in some ways it's a bit self-serving. When the focus of art becomes more on calling ourselves artists and letting people know that we are important, we start losing sight of what the point of art actually is. And when we stop realizing how important entertainment is, well, the world's gonna get a lot more depressing. Like, I do have countless stories about the times that uh, a piece of art, whether it was a song or whether it was a game or a movie, uh, touched me and had an effect on my life and helped me get through something. The thing is, there were also times where I've come back after a really long day and I just wanted to watch The Mask. There were so many times where I just had to sink a couple hours into a game or, or watch a stand-up routine just to get myself to a point where I could deal with all the crap that I, that I just couldn't handle at that moment. It's absolutely wonderful that we now have a generation uh, that realizes that artists help shape the world, uh, that they're the ones who affect the future with their words and their sounds and their images. But I think it's also important that we remember that it's the entertainers who stop the world from just falling apart at the seams when things get rough. I'm not usually a huge fan for invoking 9-11 for the sake of an argument, uh, but with all of the great, wonderful, meaningful, human speeches that, uh, th that came out of that time. One of the most memorable things uh, that happened in response to it was the opening of the next Saturday Night Live episode. 
as a nation, we had a lot of healing to do. And one of the first and most important questions for us to ask was, can we be funny? It's also really important that we stop looking at art as, uh, as drama and uh, entertainment as comedy. Soap operas are entertainment, and they're not fun- well, they're not intentionally funny. That is drama for entertainment's sake. And there is a lot of that in current dramas on TV now. And there is comedy that has changed nations. For example, just look at what a huge role comedy has been playing in the last couple presidential elections. I would argue that these comedy shows are having a more profound political impact than our news shows. If you consider yourself an artist, great, hold on to that, be proud of that. If you consider yourself an entertainer, hold on to that, be proud of that. If you consider yourself both, you probably are. If you don't consider yourself both, you probably actually are. Anyway, those are the ramblings of uh, somebody who hasn't done anything to prove himself yet. Uh, so feel free to disregard them in the comment section below. Feel free to hit that dislike button and uh, make sure you didn't accidentally subscribe to me. I'll see you guys next time with, with maybe a video I put some work into. Oh, I didn't sync this one. Caroline! Caroline, all the guys would say you're mighty fine. I'm mighty fine, I wanna get you somewhere half the time.